in black trunks with brown trim. He is fighting out of Seattle, Washington, by way of the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in Montana. He weighed in at 233 pounds. His record includes 30 wins, three losses, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the first Native American to fight for the heavyweight crown. He is currently ranked the WBA number four heavyweight in the world. Please welcome Joe, the boss yeah. hip. Hey, hey. And his opponent across the rings, the defending heavyweight champion of the world, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, fighting out of his hometown of Atlantic City, New Jersey. He weighed in at 234 pounds. His record, 32 wins, three losses, with 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the first defense of his title. Here is the WBA heavyweight champion of the world, known as the Atlantic City Express, Bruce Seldon. And once again, here's our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Richard Steele. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. In case they were knocked down, immediately turn around, go to the neutral corner, stay there until I tell you to come out. Shake hands, good luck. All right, Joe, Joe, let's go. The MGM Grand Garden, just about filled to capacity now. Joe Hip, tough southpaw, durable, strong, has basically fought through pain his entire career. He's got an awkward stance. As he describes it, it's completely backwards. Bruce Seldon, compact, rugged, more focused and mature the last few years, uses a very strong, fast, purposeful jab. And he was very successful with that in the win for the vacant title over Tony Tucker. Here we go. Round one scheduled for 12 for the WBA heavyweight championship. The champion Bruce Seldon in the white with the red trim. The challenger Joe Hip in the black trunks. And Joe Hip entered wearing a full eagle headdress bestowed upon him by the Blackfeet tribe honoring Joe as a chief. A very proud honor for the young man. Bruce Seldon told us he has the same game plan for hip that he had for Tucker saying my left jab will work overtime but he added if you think I had butterflies going into that Tucker fight well now they're like large birds he's nervous and as you know Bobby there's a lot more pressure when you're defending a title as opposed to fighting for it well see when you're fighting for a title you're a top challenge contending for it. if you lose you're still a top challenger that can contend if you're a champion and you lose you become a top contender it's a much bigger demotion therefore the added pressure Bobby, is it my tired old eyes, or has that guy got flab all over? Hip. Joe Hip has never been a very svelte heavyweight by any means, Freddie, but he's down quite a bit from the last time. I think he's down 12 or 13 pounds. And usually you think the people that move would be tall, thin men. He's on his bicycle a little bit here, early trying to get out of the way of Bruce Seldon's jab. Well, he is down to 230. Three from 245, his last fight, but still showing the flab. The feeling is Seldon has the better movement, so Hip needs to get inside and rough Seldon up. But Hip, whose side-to-side -side movement is limited by injured knees, insists he will outbox Seldon. He plans to take the fight into the later rounds, wear Bruce down, then knock him out. He says, people will be surprised at how well I can box. This was Hip talking. He says, I know he's got a good jab, so i got to get inside. But right now, the fight's just started, and the whole side of Hip's face is all red and threatening, blotchy and threatening to, to uh, break out into cuts. I mean, if he, he told us he was going to steal the jab, if he meant by that that he was going to let everyone land, then he's fighting a smart fight because Zeldin is out jabbing him and out jabbing him with a hard jab. Seldon has an excellent jab. His trainer, Diego Rosario, and I used to box on the weight 103 pounds. He was an excellent boxer, had a terrific jab. They have worked on that jab from the time Diego and he got together. When you were 103 pounds? I was 13 you know, years old. I never <laughs> saw your baby picture. <laughs> Round one, scheduled for 12. Joe Hip. He says, well, I'm easy to fight. I don't run. 
No, well, he is easy to fight. The jab is finding him every time Zeldin decides to pop it, and that's uh, already swollen the eye up and the whole side of his face. It's, oh, look at it. I mean, it looks like he's been fighting for six rounds here. You know, many people say that today you just have to be a heavyweight and that this is an unlikely heavyweight championship. My manager and publicist, Gary Stromberg, said, Bobby, put the weight on. Just get in there. He said, even if you lose in a great fight, I can make you a career after. <laughs> Got to be a heavyweight and in the picture. Where the big money is. Selden has never faced a southpaw. This is the first time. A monstrously boring first round. Let's listen to the corners and see if it gets any better in the corners. All right, Joe, look. You're doing good in there, okay? I got to keep that left hand a little bit, okay? When he comes with a double jab, he's going to try to throw that loop, that loop, uh, loop and right. Okay. So you got to start getting ready to throw that straight left. Okay. Get that straight left ready to go. Okay. Loosen up a little bit more, okay? A little tight. Okay. Keep your hands up. If you're going inside, keep those hands up. If you're looking good, you're hitting him easy, nice and easy from the outside. Right. Don't change it because you're doing good. You don't want to give him no. You don't want to give him no energy. You don't know no confidence. You want to keep on that. Keep the same rhythm, the same that he beating on his face. Benny, forget about the body. Pocket? Keep that jab on his face. Keep That's working ridiculous. on his face. He's going to open. The time is going to come. Okay. The outside, just like that, just like you're doing. Well, we come off a very uneventful opening round of this championship fight. Very cool, composed. Diego Rosario, who was an excellent boxer in his day, in the face of Bruce Selden, the Atlantic City Express. The big question surrounding Selden has been his chin ever since he was rocked by a Riddick Foe left hook in 91. His chin has been suspect. It was a punch, I think, that uh, you said, Bobby. It didn't look like a very big left hook, uh, but it hurt Selden more than it probably should have. Well, sometimes when you get hit with a punch that turned in properly, it doesn't look big, doesn't sound uh, big, doesn't have that big thud, but it does become very effective and is a well-delivered shot. And after all, Riddick Bow is a big man and can punch. Also, Jose Rivalda had him down, so the chin has been a question for Selden. Get ready, Joe. Get ready. Well, the jab that he's popping in there is what his, his game plan, and they had double end swells going on the face of Hip in the corner, indicating, boy, those guys are already worried that this stuff is going to start swelling up his eyes, and he's not going to be able to see if the jab continues, and they're right. And you heard Diego tell him, work from the outside, work easy, just keep peppering his face, do what you're doing, don't give him a chance, don't let him get any momentum going toward him. Hip, in one word, survivor. Very tough against Tommy Morrison in 92. He broke Morrison's jaw in the second round. Later on the fight Morrison broke hips cheekbone the fight lasted nine rounds with Morrison winning by TKO were they fighting with hammers or something? Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of fractures and facial fractures for a fight seems that way he generally has a meet me in the middle of the ring philosophy talking about Joe hip little right the uppercut there by Selden halfway through the second round well that's not that's happening that's a meet me and jab me in the middle of the ring philosophy meet me and show me how hard your jab is Hip's got to get under the jab, and he's got to take some chances. He's got to maybe loop a left hook. There he tried there. He tried to do it. Try and loop a left hand here. Throw a right hook to the body, a la left hook for a conventional fighter. Selton, who has pretty good foot speed, may be wise to continue to move on Hip using the angles. But meanwhile, it's Hip the one who's moving around here, dancing around a little bit, trying to show people that uh, he has movement. You know, Bobby, it was interesting when we were talking to him. He said, I'm going to try to take the jab. I am going to take the jab away. And you ask him, how are you going to do that? And, you know, he didn't give you an answer. <laughs> well, actually, he did to kind of give me an answer later. He said, by moving away. No, Bobby. You can't hit anybody by moving No, Bobby, away. it wasn't an answer. It was <laughs> words, but they weren't an answer. <laughs> Rhetoric. Yeah, those were. Yeah, I'm going to move away from it. Right. You know, to look at Bruce Sellers, his appearance physique-wise, he looks like a perfect, I mean, a perfect specimen. If he ever fought as well as he looked, everybody would be in trouble. Yeah, he, he does have a beautiful well physique. sculpted physique, for sure. Wild miss there with a left hook try by Joe Hip. This kind of looks like Joe Lewis versus two-ton Tony Galento, who looked like a beer barrel when he fought him. And Joe looked great when he fought. Joe Lewis looked great. I'll tell you, though, Tony Galento had Joe Lewis on the floor and ruined Lou Nova, top heavyweight way back then. Heavy and fat as he was, he could fight. Well, Bruce yeah, Selden right. looking to avoid that scenario as the bell sound. Another one in the bag for Bruce. Give me the ice back. Good job, Joe. Pull that one for me, Roland. 
Beautiful, Joe. Beautiful. Just That's the way, moving. baby. Just Joe, moving. exactly the same way you did that round, okay? okay? Use a jab, Joe. Get the jab going. Set all your punches up for the jab. When okay. he starts coming towards you, use the jab. That'll offset that straight right hand, okay? okay. And when he double jabs you, you know he's going to throw with that right hand. Let loose that straight left. Okay. Don't loop your punches. Throw straight punches. Left. You're doing yeah. Keep okay. this foot on the outside. And then as you keep it on the outside, you be bop. Bob, you got to keep the same rhythm. But in close, without jumping. Don't make the slip and step out. Then you got to set yourself back up. I want you to stay right there and keep the same pace. You got to keep that same. Okay. Stay beating on him with the jab. Let's go. With the jab. One round at a time, please. Well, so far, Joe Hip has not been able to get inside of Bruce Selden and, and solve the jab. And uh, giving credit to Bruce Selden, he is maintaining his coolest composure just as he did against Tony Tucker. He's boxing well. He is fighting a smart fight. He's not going head hunting. He's continuing to use that jab. Side to side. Give him some motion. They want more motion and side to side movement from Joe Hip. The instructions from his court. Hip's not going to get it done from the outside with one wild swing shot, left hook or overhand, right or any other thing that he's going to throw. He's got to get inside and take his chance with some combinations, dig to the body and make Bruce Selden think and work inside. I'll tell you, the left-handed style is no factor at all for Bruce Selden. He's just going right through it. He's just acting like this guy doesn't make it with his right hand and left hand. He's coming through with that jab and he's landing with it. And he's doing a, an amazingly good job at closing that eye. It is his first southpaw opponent. And uh, he sparred it with 10 people. Eight of the 10 were southpaws. It's a beautiful jab by Selden. Great. Well, one of these minutes, Bruce Allen is going to decide to use the right with those double uh, jabs and then follow it with a hook. And we may see a visible effect on Joe Hip. It doesn't look like he's able to receive that big a blow and stand it. Well, there you saw him take, make an attempt with that overhand left, but no follow up, no right hook, no body shots, just one at a time. That's not going to work. Not hard, not picture uh, perfect punches, just kind of floating balloons is what he's throwing. The last four or five years, Selden has become more of a complete fighter. He's much more Punch focused, more mature. He's hungrier, he's eager, and he's looking to set up that overhand right with that left jab, something we saw against Tony Tucker's last fight. He out, outworked and outspeeded Tony Tucker. And it looks like he's not going to have any uh, difficulty in that area against the Challenger Joe Hill. Mm. Good counter punch there. Left hook by Bruce Selden that landed to the jaw of Hip. Certainly the comparisons are drastically different and not oh. fair to the great one, but Muhammad Ali made an entire career with just one hand. So did Luis Manuel Rodriguez. He could just jab you there. So did Willie Pastrano. I mean, so did Willie Pep. I mean, they're guys that can make the left hand a whole career and look great doing it. Oh, look at that little move. What was that, a basketball move, Bobby? I think that was more of a pirouette. <laughs> that was a ballet move. Bruce Selden showing us a little uh, Barishnikov. Yeah. Very nice. They should have thrilled our producer, Jay Larkin. He was in the ballet world for a while. He's married to a ballet dancer. Ooh. And now the chase is on. Joe Hip landing with a little right hook, but not much damage. <laughs> the chase was on, but the guy caught up and got killed. <laughs> I mean, you know, the hunter got hammered. Final seconds, round three. It has been all Bruce Selden, the champion, defending his WBA heavyweight title for the first time, winning it from Tony Tucker. So the arena continues to fill in here. SRO crowd at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas. They had to add seats to accommodate this event. A crowd of better than 16,000, they say close to 17,000, will be on hand to witness a non-championship fight as Tyson Mania takes over. Later, Mike Tyson will take on Peter McNeely in Tyson's first fight back in over four years. Beautiful shot here at the MGM Grand Garden. It certainly is packing up. You can almost sense the buzz. You can almost sense the excitement. The celebrities, Pamela Sue Anderson and Tommy Lee on hand. I know uh, Ferdy, a big fan of Baywatch. I, you know, I'm a big fan of Tommy Lee's. Anybody can get a girl like that, I'm a fan of his. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the other. Yeah, there's, a, there's going to be a celebrity pack. Jim Carrey, Kelsey Grammer on hand. A celebrity studded crown. That's two big talents by the standing by each other well those guys are great back to the fight round four an uninspiring performance thus far but Selden is racking up the points again with that shotgun jab 
See, for the average fan, when he looks at a fight like this and he sees a man built like Bruce Selden and on the opposite side of the coin, one that's built like Joe Hippie, he expects a blowout, he expects excitement, he expects domination. And although he's winning very, very consistently, he's not dominating. Well, he's pitching a shutout. It's, it's like, you know, saying you want to go to the best baseball game, see a lot of home runs, but you're seeing a no hitter. I mean, it's not exciting, but it's but it is something. It's a shutout here. It's it's like absolute zero uh, uh, excitement on the part of Joe Hip. He, he doesn't even know how to get in and how to counteract the jab. Well, Selden is just too fast. Look at that, a spin move by Bruce Selden. Oh, steal, steal for the first time. Says that's a second spin, another one, and I'm going to dock you four tenths of a point. Well, it's technically legal to turn your back on your opponent. And that's what he did, turn in a full circle twice. That's something you don't see very often. Like you said, it's a basketball move. Now hip going to the body, and Selden answering back, and then running away. That may have been the first solid punch of the fight there by Bruce Selden. Yeah, and, and the one that any, anyone that break, had any effectiveness break. to it. You know, like, I'm Step mad, up. and I'm going to try to punch you. Bruce landed a nice one-two follow-up with another one-two, and then held on. He wasn't hurt. Hip wasn't even punching, but he held on. Midway round four, Hip told us that his his game plan was to go to the body, get inside, get inside the uh, jab of Bruce Selden, make Selden's arms tired, but he has been uh, ineffective. Selden just too fast for him. Able to spin away. And, and the jab, you, you, you can't exaggerate enough what a jab does to you. It does to your timing, it does to your confidence. You can't get your stuff off, you keep getting hit, starts hurting. I mean, a jab is a thing of beauty as, as a boxing weapon. And there it is as we speak. As he just it flicks out. it out. It's not only a probing jab, but it's an effective, strong jab. It's got a nice, stiff, quick jab, very snappy. Not a full time power jab. Oh, left hook and a countering left by Hip. And Hip going to the body and digging in. Hip staggered. Selden just, just briefly there. Selden holding on a little bit now. Got a nice left hand. In. This is the best Hip has left. Round four. Selden shakes his head, says, You're not doing anything. But he did stun him. He did stun him. And he did hold on to the first big good action from Joe Hip. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round four. And Joe Hip getting the wake up call. Not enough to win the round, but he certainly got the champion's attention. Get the jab. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what they tell the champion in the corner because he came close to getting hammered there. If just missing with that left hook as we head for the bell. Take them out, Miss Diego. Close your eyes, baby. There you How you go. feel? Good. Okay. Well, Bruce, you feel good, right? Don't, don't scare us like that. Come on, Bruce. You train too hard for this. You know why you got caught? Because you're, you're sitting in the ropes, you're going like this. I don't want to see you. That, that's not how we train, right? Yeah. How we train, Bruce? Moving. All right. Well, keep that saying the jab, pop, pop, and moving. Keep that. Come on. Now you're gonna get a little tired. All right, let's take a that's look at uh, from overhead. Let's take a look at Hip's brief moment of glory. That's a punch to the back of the head. That didn't do anything. But that one was the one that caught his attention. That left hook there, however sloppy it was, did have some effect on him, Bobby. And if you watch it really slow, he's coming in, he's leaning in, not really on balance, and just gets hit there. And, and okay, the shot was clean. Hip was falling back. So was Selden. Not as clean as it appeared when we did it. Fast beat. Round five. Well, in the last round, Hip making uh, Selden take notice, hitting him with some big shots. But Hip's left eye is beginning to swell. Come on, Joe, get the jab going. Well, a little pop quiz in the corner of Bruce Selden. His trainer, Diego Rosario, says, Bruce. How do we train? And he goes, movement. Now he's just got to uh, follow through. I wonder if they gave him anything for a lollipop or a point on the report card. That's the right answer. Mm. Oh, telegraph that one. Well, that, that's the point where we talked about earlier. Couple of, a couple of jabs and then the right hand. He just did it then. He, he's starting to open up. He's that wasn't say, even right. a good straight right or a good overhand right. That was kind of a slow lagging right hookish. Yeah, like like uh, it, it occurred to him too late for it to land. There's the left and the right. Now movement by Hip was dancing around, backpedaling, but not throwing any punches. And that jab is easily shielded by Selden. Selden getting through again with his left jab. 
You would think after the success, the little bit of success that Joe Hip had putting Sheldon on the ropes, he might press him a little more, but he's not. Yeah, he might might try to get offensive minded to push him, bully him, to to try to tie him up and out strengthen him, you know, to, to get some some offense going. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's get some offense, Joe. Little right hook there by Sheldon as he was coming away. Hip's best punch is the straight left. He has lots of power in the left hand. Oh, low blow there by that Bruce Sheldon. Way south of the border. That was a Miguel Angel Gonzalez punch. And that was a legitimate warning. Oh, right up. a left uppercut there by Joe Hip that snuck through. But see, he didn't follow up. He didn't test to see what kind of damage it may have done. He is not a good finisher, uh, Joe Hip. Not a bad starter. Eight of his uh, 19 KOs in the first round, 15 of the first three. But. It and, has been and, mostly Bruce Silver. And you have to say he's a wonderful catcher. I don't think I've seen a guy catch True. as many jabs in a long, long time and still stay standing. Bobby, do you think that a corner can tell a guy how to block a jab when it's landing that much? He doesn't even try to block it. I mean, is there any way that you can tell a guy, hey, Use your hand, block it. Get I'm your, sure you could tell him, but if he hasn't worked on it in the gym, and it's going to probably be difficult to just bring it to his attention like that. Well, and, and almost similar to that Tucker fight, uh, it looks like target practice now for Selden. He's aiming for that eye. Why not? I mean, he's he's closing it slowly, slowly, and, and the only way he can get tired is he can get tired of throwing a jab because he's not, neither man are doing much fighting to get tired. Final seconds of round oh, number five. Left hook there by Selden that landed to the head of him as the bell sounds. Right now, let's go over to Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Steve. I'm with Tim Mallon. Yeah, you can ring I the want bell. To ring the bell. Of home improvement. This is your first fight. What attracted you here? Well, I didn't want to say anything because it's 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 big news. I'm actually here on a site survey for Walt Disney. We're buying Vegas. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we're looking at the whole state of Nevada eventually in the western side of the country, but Disney is buying Vegas. We got ABC, Vegas, and they just purchased Guam for me. Curiosity was too great, though, to stay away from Tyson. Stop with the mic. Don't do this thing. Tyson, the chicken people there? Yeah, the chicken. There's a whole bunch of chicken here. Oh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, yeah. No, the, the only fight I've ever been to is my brother. The, the last fight I was at, I was in it. It was with my brother after school. So I came here because. Um, Showtime took my pet dog, and I don't get it back unless I. No, I just came to see what this is all about, and this is a, It's a little frightening. I mean, I, I saw. I, I saw the worse than you and your brother. Well, I saw Yeltsin here. <laughs> I mean, who isn't at this thing? Let's go back up to the ring. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Steve. All right, Jim. Thanks very much. As we enter round six, both fighters rested for most of that last round, but they they really have been all that active uh, in the first place. Selden uh, has been effective with the left jab. And the depressing fact is that it is a shutout and that hip does not seem to understand that he must block the jab and he must have some offensive action. We're just waiting for that crunching overhand right to get through by Bruce Sheldon and so is Bruce. Even when Bruce throws that jab jab right even if hip blocks it he doesn't fire back he's got to fire back. But this awkward southpaw style of Joe hip is having uh, no positive effects for him against Bruce Sheldon. Sheldon the. Uh, just walking right through hip here. It would, it would seem to me that if uh, if Selden belabors that flabby body he's got there, he's got a gold in that territory because this guy doesn't look like he's got a muscle through all that flab. Well, it's heating up a little bit now. They're fighting toe to toe on each side, head to head. Most of the damage still being done by the same man, the champion Bruce Selden. Come on, work and get out of there. Bruce Selden, 32 and 3, 28 knockouts. He's 28. Out of Atlantic City, New Jersey, his first defense of the title. Bruce, you see him now, he's the kind of leaning southpaw. Now, you see him take that left hand and turn it over like a southpaw? He switches on the inside a lot, turns and switches his angles and his, swings his weight across his body. Come on, work again. Why would Zeldin want to get that close to let this guy punch him? Why would he do that? And when he's just bouncing jab after jab, winning easily, why would he get inside to get punished? Is he bored? Well, Steve, I could offer up a few different uh, opinions. One, he could be getting a little tired, although I don't think that's the case. It's early. He hasn't done a lot. Two, he may think that this is the easiest way to not get caught one of those looping shots. Or three, he is bored. I think three is a much better choice than one and two. Is this multiple choice? <laughs> yeah. I could always pass those tests. Look at that. Hip going to the head. And he just stopped. And his corner is urging him to keep going. Tony Perea in the corner there, a former 
All American football player. Punching it out. Oh, ho, oh, good time. Let's go. Let's go. Uh -oh. Come on, let's go. A warning to uh, Bruce Seldon from Richard Steele. Second time. Keep him up. Hey, finally, a way that Hip can get a point. Well, we're just halfway through the fight and, and color me confused. But Hip looks like he's really, really tired. We're going to get out. And he's supposed to be in the best condition of his life. That's what he told us. He's bench pressing a lot more, over 300 pounds, as opposed to 135. They're not long ago. But you wouldn't know it. Less than, oh, a left hook by Sheldon with less than 20 seconds. Hip coming back. Sheldon, is Sheldon hurt or he's just faking? I thought he was playing myself. I think he's Yeah, playing. he's playing. He's that's faking. exactly what he's doing. When he's, hurt, when he's hurt, he's a lot worse than that. It certainly got the crowd going. They thought Hip had something together there. But it was playing by Sheldon. Look at me, Bruce. Pro time. Listen to me, Bruce. Listen to me. You want to, you want to keep this, fight, this title? You got to fight for it. You're enjoying the fight, okay? So you keep on fighting. Don't let the, don't give the guy confidence. Move. Don't all right, stay let's here take a replay and let's see if, the, if who was faking and who was. I, I don't believe that Zeldin was hurt at all. And a hip was hurt a little bit. But as far as Zeldin is concerned, look, that was like a nothing point you catch. Playing, 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 and trapping. Let's see, let's see what happens. I don't know. You look at it again. Bruce Zeldin lands a nice right there and follows with a left hook. Hip comes back with a straight left, fairly clean. I think he got Bruce Seldon's attention a little bit, but then Bruce played, let him come in and try and load up. Yeah, I don't think that was any way where you can qualify that as hurt. Round seven. We'll see if Seldon comes out mm. with more fury Make here in the seventh round. Going yeah. to the body with that right uppercut is Seldon. Well, he's got, a, he's got a plenty of points to spare. I mean, if he wants to get a, a point taken away from it, it's okay. He's way ahead, 60 to 54. But don't you think, Bobby, he should be able to put this guy away, talking about Bruce Sill. Well, you know, you, as you're looking at it, as it stacks up physically by appearances on paper, with what he has in the way of tools, you say yes, but then, you know, the intangibles come in. A man's heart and courage, the chin of... Uh, Bruce Hip, the desire to stay in there, uh, excuse me, Joe Hip, the desire to stay in there and, you know, take your chance. Well, he's got a lot of pride. He's a survivor. He is, uh, he has fought through a lot of pain. We can't take that away from Joe Hip. His 15 sisters flew in from Browning, Montana, to present him with a good luck traditional Native American headdress. His Native American name is Ekumsqui, which means fast chase, given to him by his uh, grandfather, a proud member of the Blackfeet Reservation in Browning, Montana. But yeah, Bruce Seldon is out as well. check that. I, I, think it, I think the Indian meaning is eat a jab. Okay. That's what I think his meaning is, because that's all he has done. I'm not even going to touch that, Freddie. Well, you can let him get it, Bobby. And if there is any confusion out there, he is the one who told us he is from the Blackfeet as opposed to the Blackfoot Reservation. Midway past round seven, scheduled for 12. The WBA Heavyweight Championship, it has been a rather uninspiring fight as we stand by for the big one, the main event, Mike Tyson and Peter McNeely. They saw Bruce Selden, he threw a jab, threw another jab through the right hand, ducked, but doesn't really unload with a lot of combinations. One, one, two. Maybe one, two, three, but not really pressuring the situation, not really trying to close this out. Bobby, we're talking about a, a heavyweight champion who is not taking command. He's not understood. He's a heavyweight oh. champion. You take command of guys like this and get them out. Left strong, left jab, followed by a right uppercut by Selden, getting the attention of Bruce, of uh, Joe Hip, and Joe Hip is bleeding. Heavy right, overhand right by Bruce Selden. And that sort of wiped off the blood. Yeah, I didn't see too much blood on this guy except on the nose a little bit. No, I can't help but believe if Selden puts together four or five punch combinations, two or three in a row, back to back with the right pressure, that this fight is much closer to the end. That's what I'm saying. As we approach 20 seconds, round six. Yeah, and he has to do that in order to impress you. This is the guy supposed to fight uh, uh, Tyson. If Tyson, everything goes well with Tyson in the, in the next several months. Can you imagine what Tyson would do with this guy? Yes, indeed. The winner of this fight may meet Mike Tyson down the road in March. Tyson is looking ahead to perhaps Buster Mathis Jr. after McNeely in November.
个时间。Get those hands up, okay? Okay. Gotta get those hands up, man. You know what, Joe? He, he, he comes out fast, but he's turning at the end, so you gotta turn it on. Okay. At the end, you gotta Not turn it on. Okay. Let the punches go. Throw straight punches. Let that left hand go. You Put some water work, on his Joey. head. Put some water on his head. You gotta work. It's just a matter of minutes now. Mike Tyson will finally step in the ring for the first time in over four and a half years, and that is behind closed doors. It is the dressing room of Mike Tyson, the former heavyweight champion who wants his privacy and he will soon be uh, getting back into the ring after three years of prison and four years of inactivity against have Peter McGee. Well in the last round Selden opened a small cut in Hip's nose. You saw the results of it. Ferdy was referring to it between rounds and landed some big straight rights. We're now to round number eight. Bruce Selden winning every round, but unable to put the challenger away. Well, the way they roll up those, those um, rolls and put them up the nose with adrenaline is usually when you break your nose. So it's not a cut. It's a probable broken nose. And, and it would figure with all the jabs he's taken, it wouldn't be hard to break a nose with, with the strength of a, of a power driving jab that a heavyweight like this throws. So that's a good possibility. And hip is certainly used to injury. Oh, yeah. He's... Uh, had it all. An injury plagued career, chronic knee problems, bone chips removed from both elbows, an eye orbital fracture, fractured a rib, a series of hand injuries that just goes on and on and on. A little broken nose is going to hurt. No, that seems uh, insignificant. And uh, certainly this southpaw style has not hurt uh, Bruce Sheldon. Usually a southpaw can be somewhat confusing, particularly if he jabs and controls the fight, but that has not been the case against the champion Sheldon. Both men have settled into a little too much of I don't really care if I don't hit him as long as he doesn't hit me right now. What I was feeling was a certain lack of aggressiveness of listen I can do this to the 12th round and uh, let's go home. Tell you what though that straight left jab by Selden followed by a right cross straight to the nose has to hurt. Yeah he's, he's wearing out I mean you know hip is wearing out. Well if you look at his face now it's getting dark and ugly. There's a cut underneath oh. his left eye. It's bleeding Blood. profusely now. The cut under Hip's left eye is bleeding profusely. And that's what the repeated jabs will do. It macerate the tissue and just cause it to pop open. It won't be long before a doctor will be in here, and it may not be long before it stops then. Unless Hip starts to do a lot more fighting, there's no reason to let him just get butchered. Hip's face, an ugly mess right now. Sheldon goes for the target. Well, Bruce is staying on the outside, constantly pushing that jab into Joe Hibbs' face, a la what Diego Rosario was telling him in the corner, not forcing the issue any more than he has to. And Hip has just never been able to follow his game plan and get on the inside of that Selden jab all night. That left eye is ugly. Joe Hip. A major welt. Terrible cut. His nose may be broken. It sounds like the Tucker fight now. Yeah, beginning to sound like a report in the emergency room. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Let him go. No holding. Punch your way out. Final seconds, Let round eight. Come on, Joe. Let him go. Great. Come on, baby. No water, no water. Okay. It's all right, we get it. Come on, baby. Come on, Joey. You gotta keep those hands Yo, up. This is not a boxing match anymore, okay? This is a fight. Come now on, go baby. get this guy. You gotta go get him and you gotta throw punches. Take it to him, baby. Let those hands go, okay? Let it go, baby. Let it go, okay? Gotta give him some head movement. Don't stand in front of him. Don't let, don't, you gotta give him up and down or side You gotta get him side. this round. And you got to All right, let's take a look at what's doing the damage. Of course, the jab, then the hook after the jab, and then a right hand after the hook. And that is the classic combination in boxing. And of course, this is repetitive. One round after the other, his Joe Hip's face is falling apart. Bobby. You can't eat that many jabs, Freddy. You just keep eating them, you're going to bust up. Take some off. You got too much on. Come on, you got Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Go get him, Joey. Dr. James Game in the corner of Joe Hip looking on very closely, and they let it proceed. Round nine. 
terrible welted cut under the left eye of Joe Hip. As mentioned before, his nose may be broken. I, I didn't see the doctor come in. I didn't see him examine him. We were looking at him pretty close. What's happening? Now he's going to take him over to the doctor. There now let's see. You got too much on. Come on. Oh, they got oh. too much of the Vaseline on underneath take the left eye, so they got to take some of that off. That's Richard's. Oh, it, oh and that is a deep, wow. ugly gash I, when that stuff was removed. Did yeah, you see that? I, yeah, I don't know that if that was right to remove that. I don't know. I'll tell you what, you could have put your whole finger in there. Wow. Well, the doctor should have been in there examined a lot closer than from the outside of the ropes. I mean, that's why I forget the we'll cut see. is under the eye. There's no danger of the blood trickling into his eye, so you don't mind a little ugliness and a couple of scars. Well, there's a lot of ugliness. This guy's got a history of all kind of facial fractures. You got a lot to, to worry about, and you got a lot to examine. You can't do that from outside the ropes, Bobby. You got to get inside. You got to put your hands on the fighter. High cheekbones there, uh, hip, and his eyes are beginning to close. You know, at this point in time, he's well beyond the point of no return. For some fighters, it's just a matter of, okay, can I finish the fight, stay on my feet for 12 rounds with the champion? But if I'm Joe Hip, I'm throwing caution in the wind. I'm taking my shot here. He's got a lot of heart as the blood gushes out of that gas once again. Hip just keeps coming forward despite all of his problems. Uh, bravery has never been one of his problems. We, have, we don't decry his heart and, and his courage. It's just that simply it's a matter of one man's talent is not as big as the other. He can barely see. Joe Hip can barely see. He's got slits for eyes. He's got a big swelling under there. It's cut. He's got a possible broken nose. He is a mess. There's nothing in his future but more jabs. And I'll tell you right now, they're not going to accuse Bruce Seldon of having too much of the killer instinct because he's staying back, keeping his game plan boxing ready, and willing to accept the 12 round decision. Doesn't seem to be any urgency on his part. He well, is not pressing, the, he's jabbing beautifully, but not really swarming. And uh, you get the feeling if he wanted to, he could just end this fight at any moment. Well, Steve, when you when you figure he's got a contract with Tyson in his back pocket, I don't think he needs to take too many chances. You think he's actually thinking about nah, that? No, 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 no. What he's thinking about is, look, be safe, go to the end. Why go into a war with this guy? You got him beat. He doesn't have a killer instinct. Bobby's pointed that out very well, and that's exactly what we're looking at, a guy that doesn't kill. He told us in the meeting yesterday, Sheldon, that Tyson is lurking in the back of his mind. But he just wants to get out of here safe and sound right now. Yeah, you're talking about a huge amount of money, and... Uh, and a great chance at uh, ring immortality if you beat Tyson. I mean, and here you got a guy you're beating to death. Why take a chance? Now the doctor should come in and look at it up close. Let's see. Come on, get the bitch. Sit down, Joe. Come on, baby. You Don't blow your nose. You got to step and punch for me now, okay? You get him going, then you let him get away. <laughs> all right. Still, hold still. Stay on top of him. All right. It's for the time. You only got a couple of rounds. Joe, you let it all hang don't, out. don't stop, Joe. Keep going, man. Yeah, keep going, okay? Keep going, throwing that straight left. Take, step to your right. Step outside his left foot to your right and let the left go as hard as you can let it go, man. Yeah. Come yeah. on, baby. Three and four at a time. This is round, this is round 10. Oh. He is the leg, Joe. Wait, thank God. So far, I see no doctor it's inside the ring. Step to him. Round 10, Joe. Round 10, Joe. Below the eye. Cuts no trouble below the eye. Don't put too much on. No, he won't. How's that? That's good. Tenth round, Joe. Come on. You hear me, Joey? Step and punch. If he is in the legs, you make this break. Stay on top of him. Come on, second. Let's go. Come on, guys. Come on, Joe. Come on, babe. Let's go, babe. Come on, Joe. James Gabe was wearing a uh, very bright uh, blue-green uh, jacket, was sort of standing on the outside, but he never really got that close. Uh, I mean, so. I don't understand this. This guy was like three feet away from him. I mean, he's on the outside. They're giving him ring instructions. The most important thing here is medical inspection. They haven't looked at him. I can't understand that. It's two rounds that they really should have looked at him. He should have gotten in close. Right. At least this time, he's inside the ropes. Last time, he was outside the ropes. Round number 10, more damage being inflicted on Joe Hip's left cheekbone in the last round by Bruce Selden. Wicked left jab there by Selden. Except for the degrees of swelling and blood, you could just run a repeat of the last round and the round before that. Selden moving, using a jab. Kind of uneventful rounds, but very effective. I don't know how Hip can see through those slits right now. Well, he's got 
damage on, and both eyelids are swollen so they're closing now under it they both got not only have a, a swelling but a cut which makes it even worse so both eyes are closing in the classical manner the only way this doctor apparently is going to get here is if Richard Steele stops the fight and has the boxer come over for the doctor to examine and decide whether he should continue or not which is very legitimate and which Richard Steele has been known to do many times Steele has not taken his eyes off of the eyes of Joe Hip. He could just barely see out of his left eye. I'm convinced that if Bruce Seldon presses this, throws four or five combinations, multi-punch combinations, referee steps in, stops his fight, because let's face it, he's well past the point of no return. Well, a shutout. When the Vaseline on Hip's cheek wears off, as I mean, you mentioned before, you can really see how deep the cut is, and you get the feeling if the doctor gets a close look at it between rounds 10 and 11, he's going to stop it. Oh, I think so. Look, look there he is. There he is. There is. Richard's right. Yeah, Richard's yeah. right. Steele's right. This guy can't even find a corner. Well, you saw him wincing his eye. I think he was letting the referee know he was done. Good move right. on Richard Steele's part. Excellent. He stops the play. Excellent move by Richard Steele. And uh, if they could have been stopped that one round before. The doctor should have been a little bit more aggressive. Going in there, taking a real good look at it. That's his job. That's his obligation. Uh, and Richard Steele very wisely stepped in and prevented further damage. As far as I'm concerned, it was a shutout and a, uh, a thoroughly boring fight. Yes, as you hear the crowd reacting in an uninspiring fashion, Bruce Sheldon defends his title against this man, a bloody mess, Joe Hill. Yes. Sheldon yes. raising his record to 33 and 3. The fight is stopped. And so he picks up his 29th knockout. Bruce Sheldon successful in his first defense of the WBA heavyweight title. Good fight. Uh, embracing the loser, Joe Hill. His first world title shot drops to 30 and 4. Uh, Hip getting his first real big fight experience on the undercard here of Mike Tyson's return. Look at that guy under the left eye of Hip. And under the eye. He's got a little trip to make to the emergency room tonight. They got to sew that up. It's unfortunate, but uh, he had he just had no defense and, and a jab too sharp and too fast by I, I tell you what I don't think that uh, Bruce Zeldin who I really like as a, as a fighter covered himself with glory he did what he had to do to win well it was not a crowd pleasing effort by Bruce Zeldin and uh, if he's going to fight Mike Tyson down the road he's going to have to uh, retool and go back to the gym and work on some new things well he, he couldn't get by with a with a lackluster performance like that with uh, with Tyson Tyson would go right through him yeah, if that's all he's going to do then he better get some uh, some energy going as far as finishing and as far as aggression and as far as wanting to, to lay it out with a fighter he showed none of those and certainly without that Tyson will eat him up we have to bring a couple of hammers into the ring though with him and that fight could be brewing in the near future. Sheldon versus Tyson. We're set for the official time. Let's go over to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 47 seconds. In round number 10, our referee in charge, Richard Steele, stops the contest. And the winner by way of technical knockout and still WBA heavyweight champion of the world, the Atlantic Speak City up. Express, Speak Bruce Seldon. It boggles my mind. I don't understand this. All three judges had hip winning three rounds. Isn't that amazing? I want to go to one of their teaching clinics. I want to know what three rounds. Somebody's got to show me three rounds that he won. I, I, I got to go back one. to kindergarten and learn how to count. In any event, Bruce Seldon has the championship held in his first defense. Remains the WBA heavyweight title holder. Up next, it may not be a championship fight, but the eyes of the world are on our main event. And Mike Tyson is the reason why. Coming up, what you've all been waiting for, the return of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson against Peter McNeely in a 10-round heavyweight bout. And the MGM Grand is packed and waiting in eager anticipation for the main event. So we're set once again for our new addition to the broadcast. Bobby Chez has more on the Sheldon hip fight with the help of the telestrator. Bobby. OK, you watch here. Bruce Sheldon again using this using his left hand. This left hand is the key. The jab is the jabs coming right down the middle, right down the middle. The hands, Joe hip are low. When he leans and he bends over, his hands get even lower. Sheldon jabs him, then hooks right on the button, right on these eyes. You watch that left hand work. It's been a picture of beauty. 
There's the jab. There's the hook. The landing clean. Again, the hands of Joe Hipper down. Now the right hand to go to the other eye. He did whatever he wanted. Everything landed. Hip did not have any good defense and very little offense. So that's the story. Uh, the WBA Heavyweight Championship stays with Bruce Sheldon. Let's go back upstairs to Jim Hill and Sugar Ray Leonard. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Ray, before the heavyweight bout, when I looked at you, you said, yeah, I like to watch the big fellas go at it, but uh, you're a little disappointed in what you saw. Well, I am, Jim. I mean, I like to see the big guys go at it, but then again, I like to see a very evenly competitive fight. This fight was rather boring. Uh, I think with the champion, Bruce Seldom, he has to show aggression to, to, see, to show people that he wants to fight. Uh, he laid back, and he did what he had to do to win, but I still think these guys don't give enough of themselves to be effective. A couple of months ago, you wrote an article about the heavyweight division. You criticized some fighters in the heavyweight division, and you praised others about, you know, unifying the, the heavyweight division. Where would this particular fight fall into? What category would that fall into? It's not in the same category, Jim. I mean, these guys, I mean, they did, again, Bruce Seldon did what he had to do, but it wasn't impressive. And uh, Joe Hip, he just wasn't, was not in the same league as a Bruce Seldon. I think the heavyweight division is re really in for a, uh, a trash situation. I hate to say that, but Mike Tyson hopefully will give these guys some inspiration to get in shape. Well, Ray, we got it all coming up <laughs> for you. Stay right where you are. You folks at home, you stay right where you are because we have a couple of more heavyweights coming up in our main event when Mike Tyson returns to the ring. And we will be back with more from the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, Nevada, in just a moment. King Vision and SET Pay-Per-View would like to give special thanks to America West Airlines and to our regional corporate promotion partners, Coca-Cola, Subway, Pizza Hut, Toyota, Domino's Pizza, and Target Stores. You know the name. You know the power. You know the fury. Now he's back. And he's ready to rock the ring in the boxing event of the decade. Tyson versus McNeely at the MGM Grand. Now you can be a part of this awesome event and own a piece of boxing history. Call now and order your fight merchandise commemorating the return of Mike Tyson. You can order the cap, t-shirt, or an authentic fight program. Call 1-800-33-TYSON now and your official fight merchandise will be delivered directly to your door. Make the call now. 1-800-33-TYSON. No matter who or where you are, you can experience the return of Mike Tyson. This commemorative cap, t-shirt, and fight program can be purchased separately or get all three in one spectacular knockout pack.